Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, we got a real treat for you right now. We are standing at the world headquarters of Cummins Engines. And right in here, folks, this is the museum. And talk about a lot of technology. This shows a lot of years of engine development, especially diesel engine development. And you know, when we're talking about technology, Sam, one of the latest things we're working on right now is their road-going dyno. That can save a lot of development time. Absolutely, they use this all the time. And this dyno is on a trailer, it's mounted on a trailer. What they can do with this is on the flats here in, in uh, Indiana, they can simulate any kind of grade, any kind of load. So when they take a big truck, an over-the-road truck, fit an engine, they want to make it work, they can dial it from no load to full load to 5%, 10% grade and really test that truck in real world conditions. Well, they sure can, and that can save a lot of time and it's all programmable. But, you know, in the old days, they didn't have that type of luxury. They did a lot of the development work of trying and fitting and going out and testing and see what would happen. And this museum represents a lot of that. And Zach, you know, you've been here for quite a while. I'm really intrigued by this blowing apart engine you have behind us. This engine's on wires. It's 855 cubic inches. It's a big cam three. Used to make about uh, 350 horsepower. We thought that was big at the time. Mm -hmm. What did that go in? That went in the class eight uh, big rigs. Okay. And then, and then when you look at that, the same amount of material that's used to build that engine is in this column here, representing all the different materials, the coppers, the steels, the cast iron, the lead, aluminum cork, and everything that's used to build these engines. That's a real piece of art, isn't it? That's beautiful, and yes And each it one is. represents the percentage of material that was in an engine. That is there, correct, right? yes. That is wild. Absolutely. And you know, this technology marched on right up to, this is the most current engine. This is the 6.7 turbo diesel that you find in the, uh, uh, the Ram pickup truck, the latest and greatest thing with all of the, you know, all of the technology on it. Develops a lot of power, very reliable, and of course, it sprang from some of the things that we've seen here. Well, talking about this engine, you want to go back a little bit, Sam? How about going back here, according to the brochure, the Model C, or the red engine, introduced in 1919. What about that one? Well, that was an engine that made one and a half horsepower. Wasn't very big, but they sold it through the Sears and Roebuck catalog. <laughs> and they sold it to farmers to power their uh, farm equipment and it had a money-back guarantee, so the farmers would buy them, they'd use it for a season, and ship it back, no questions asked. That didn't work too well, <laughs> but that's what you learn in business. Absolutely. Now, what about some of the other engines that you see back there? Well, there are other engines, big, long-stroke, four-cylinder engines with lots of piston rings on them, like the piston we saw this at, the, at the other shop at the Pilot Center. So yes, those are uh, uh, used back in the 1920s and 1930s. I think the most interesting thing is, you know, everybody knows the, the heritage of these Auburn automobiles. There's actually an Auburn here powered by a Cummins diesel, but the inter interesting thing is it's all aluminum. It is aluminum, and it was one that Clessy Cummins drove around the country to advertise the viability of diesel power for passenger cars. And it got 34 miles per gallon in a 4,000 pound car. Awesome for its time. Amazing. Of course, I know development was in racing for a long time, several times anyway, back in the 30s, I think early 30s, they had some race cars. Yes. But I think probably one of the more famous ones is the uh, one they run in 1952. Tell me about that one. Zach. 1952, number 28. Freddie Agavation drove this car, put it on the pole. It was diesel powered the first engine to ever be turbocharged at the Indy 500 race. It started number one, and it sucked up enough rubber off of the track that it finished number 27th. That's an amazing car, and folks, I remember, I saw that car actually run, not in a race, but that was a parade lap uh, several years ago there yes. at the Speedway, and it was a really a neat deal. And of course, the last car you have is the latest one, I guess, that run the Speedway. Tell me about that one. Well, Al Unser Sr. in 1987, ran the uh, Holset uh, Special, uh, and it won, it started 20th, and actually won the race in 1987. Awesome. Of course, it didn't have a whole lot to do with uh, diesels, but it was representing Cummins, and that was a great sponsorship. We tuned up the turbocharger for it. <laughs> you did a heck yes, of a we job. Did. Zach, I want to thank you and Jason and everybody here at Cummins. Yep, thank absolutely. you. Great to have you. Great We've stuff. run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage. Bye-bye.